In this video, we're going to look at solving systems of equations by graphing. Um, a system of equation is just more than one equation in a group that have uh, some sort of related topic. In this particular section, we're just going to be looking at kind of some graphs and, and, uh, and seeing how we can talk about solutions. Um, so in problem number one here, both of these are just linear equations. So we just graph them one at a time. For the first graph, we want to identify the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is 2. Think of it as a fraction 2 over 1. My y-intercept is 1. So I can go up one point, put a dot, and then use my slope, rise over run, to go up another two points and put another dot here. At this point, what you'd like to do is you'd like to be able to go ahead and sketch in a line. If you have a ruler, that's a really nice thing that you can use here to try to make your graphs a little bit more precise. Another thing that you can do that helps some as well is remember that with a slope is a constant for a line. So if I wanted to get more points on the line to help make drawing my line a little bit easier, I could go up 2 over 1 again. I could go up 2, oops, up 2 over 1 again. And you can see that those point continue to be points on our line that I could use as part of a graphing process. Um, all right, let's try our other equation here, y equals 1 half x minus 2. Again, identify your slope. In this case, it's going to be 1 half, and identify your y-intercept, which in this case is negative 2. So I'm going to go down two points. There's a one value. Then I'm going to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and I can kind of find some additional points that work in my graph. I can also go down 1 over 2 to get a second point here, and I can connect those dots to make another line. Now, when we look at a graph of a system of equations like this, the point where the two lines cross is generally considered the most interesting point in our system. Um, and that is that that particular point, notice, is a solution for both equations. And that happens at the intersection point, anywhere that those two graphs cross. So those are the important points that we are looking for. Now in this particular problem, let's see if we can identify the ordered pair of where that is. Notice that it's definitely down here in the third quadrant. We're going to go two values over to the left, so negative 2 in the x direction, and then three values down, so negative 3 in the y direction. So the cool thing here is that this is a solution for both equations, um, and therefore it becomes an important value that you would be interested in finding. Um, if you were looking at some type of an application problem. Now, if you are, notice that my graphs are kind of shaky. If you're not completely sure if that's exactly where those two lines cross, remember that because it's a solution for both equations, I could put the point negative 2 comma 3 into each of these original equations. So y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 1 half x minus 2. So if I put negative 3 in for y and negative 2 in for x, negative 3 in for y, and negative 2 in for x. This should come out to be true in both cases. So here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so that works out awesome. Over here, 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. 1 negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and that works out great here. So we can see that this single point of negative 2 comma 3 is actually functions as a solution set for both equations. And as you can see from the picture, that's the only time that that's going to happen. Any point on this line only is going to be a solution set to the first equation, and any point on this line is only going to be a solution set to the second equation. So this particular point is special in that it's a solution set for both. Now, we sp have spent a lot of time in this class working on linear equations, and in our last section in Chapter 4, we spent some time talking about quadratic equations. And the truth is that we can solve systems of equations for any type of equations that we're interested in. And from a graphical perspective, which is nice because it's very visual, easy to picture, um, it's great because we can actually look at um, graphing a parabola and graphing a line and then looking for those points of intersection. So let's see what happens here with the second with uh, problem number two here. Notice that because my um, we'll, we'll start with the parabola, we'll, we'll deal with the line here in a minute. When I start with my parabola here, first of all, notice that because my uh, a term is positive, that my parabola is going to open up. The next thing that I'd like to find is my vertex. And remember, the vertex is 
really that it's that low point going to be the low point in my graph, so it's an important value to actually calculate. We can use the formula negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate. If we look at my equation here, my a value is 3, my b value is negative 6, and my c value is 5. So if I put in negative, negative 6, divided by 2 times 3, I end up with a positive 6 over 6, which is an x-coordinate of 1. Then I can find the y-coordinate by plugging um, x equals 1 into the parabola equation. So 3, y equals 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 5. 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 6 is negative 3 plus 5 gives me a positive 2. So the point 1, 2 is going to be the vertex for my parabola and I can graph that point here. The y-intercept is also a simple value that I can calculate. And remember, we can do find that vertical intercept by setting x equal to 0. So when we do that, we get y equals 3 times 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5. All of that front part drops out, and I'm just left with 5. So the point 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is also another point on my graph. And um, because I know that this is a parabola and it's opening up because um, there are going to be no horizontal intercepts here because I'm gonna it's never going to drop down below the vertex um, there's an axis of symmetry that goes through here so if I'm one point away here I can find another point here at the point two five and I can graph both of those points coming up like this on my equation Let's see. Let's see if we can maybe sketch that just a little bit better. So here's my point two five. It's going to come up like this. Now my next thing that I'd like to do. So that's my parabola. Uh, you can find some additional points if you like. This is a, a pretty good for a first run. Um, let's look at what happens with oops our equation here. Y equals three x minus one. So in this particular case, what I'm going to want to do is add one, is identify, oops, identify the slope and the y-intercept. My slope is going to be 3 over 1. My y-intercept is going to be negative 1. Um, so I'm going to start here at negative 1. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And notice that my line is going to go right through that vertex point. That's kind of cool. And then from here, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Oh my gosh, it's going to go through this point too. And then it's going to go kind of off to the side here a little bit as, as the graph continues on up. So let's go ahead and try to sketch that in here. It's kind of hard to do with my little sketch pad here. But you can see I've got this kind of interesting graph here. This line cuts through here and then cuts through again on the way out there in order to get my values. So this particular graph, notice, actually has two intersection points here. Uh, the first intersection point here is at the coordinate 1, 2, and the next intersection happens up here at 2, 5. And so I actually have two points that are, are solutions to this system. And I can put the point 1, 2 into both equations and they'll come out true, or I can put the point 2, 5 into both equations and they'll come out true. And the graph is a nice picture view of what type of thing is happening here. Now, it may seem a little strange at first that we get two points that cross a line, like we have, uh, or two points that cross a parabola. But again, with quadratic equations, we're kind of used to seeing two solutions to different things. So that might not come as a huge surprise. And being able to see this visual um, acknowledgement of two solutions is really cool. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's talk about a couple of different things here and just talk about, let's actually talk about what kind of solutions you can expect when you start doing graphing things. If we have two linear equations, the most common is to have one solution. And that happens, so if this is a regular axis, if here we have the equations of two different lines, the most common thing that we see is that they have a single solution. You've got two points that cross like this. However, there are a couple of other things that can happen when you're sketching lines. One is that you have two parallel lines like this. In this case, there's no solutions. And then yet another solution, uh, uh, yet another um, type of system is that when you go to graph the line and then you go to graph the next equation, it ends up being just another version of the same line. And it is, lies right on top of each other. And in this case, you have an infinite number of solutions. And anything that lies on 
one line lies on both of them. So it's not every possible solution, but it's every solution that lies along that line. So we have this possibility when we're dealing with two linear equations of having one solution or none or every solution works for every solution for one equation works for the other equation as well. When we have one linear and one quadratic equation, kind of like we had in example two here, we did have a possibility of having um, two points of intersection. So we could actually have two solutions and that's not unusual. However, there are also ways that we could have one solution. For example, if we use this um, parabola here and this line here, the only solution happens right there at the vertex. That's another possibility. Or you could just have like one solution that trips along the edge and just bumps up against the side. So that's a possibility. Or it's possible that you get uh, a linear and a quadratic equation with no solutions. So for example, if you had a line up here or a parabola up here and then a line down here, those are never going to end up crossing. So you do have a variety of different types of solutions that can happen when you're looking at things like this. Uh, with two quadratic equations, same sort of thing. You can kind of our most expected might be something like this. Notice that we get two solutions to two quadratic equations like this. So that could happen. We could maybe have two parabolas that meet at the vertex. They almost touch there. That's okay. So that would be a case where you'd have one solution or you could have something like this where there's not, no solutions at all. So keep in mind as you're looking at your graphs that the, there are these different cases that might come up as they show up. But the nice thing is as you're sketching, you can actually you actually get that visual picture of where those are going. And if they do have if your problems do have solutions, whether it's one or two, the important piece is to actually identify those intersection points because those are going to be the the values, the ordered pairs that represent the solution to the system. So those are the important key points that you want to keep an eye out for.